Hi, everyone. Welcome to Avanti Insights. Every two weeks, we'll be sharing our thoughts with you on the latest cybersecurity news. I'm Adrian Vernon, your host for today. And here at Avanti, I am Director of Sales Enablement. I recently joined Avanti as part of its acquisition of Mobile Iron. Now, while at Mobile Iron, I hosted a podcast similar in format to what we'd like to do here with Avanti Insights. And with me today, I have Phil Richards, Avanti's Chief Security Officer. Phil, we'd love to know what makes you tick. Give us your 15-second bio. Hey, Adrian. It's good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. I'd love to I'd love to talk to you about uh, some security issues. I have been Avanti's Chief Security Officer for the last five years. And prior to that, I have been I've worked in different security fields and have been the chief security officer for for both uh, financial services and healthcare organizations, which is great because a lot of our customers at Avanti and Mobile Iron are in the financial services and healthcare space, and so I feel like I have somewhat of a connection to them, having having worked on that side. I, I have a feel for some of the things they might be looking for in the security space and that kind of thing. So that ends up being really nice. Like I said, I've been here for for five years, and uh, it's been just a great ride. Ivanti is a fantastic company to work for. I feel like we're doing a lot of wonderful things, not only with our products, but uh, but really trying to take care of customer data and, uh, and protect the infra- infrastructure as well. And here at Avanti, we are growing by the quarter with the acquisition a couple months ago of Mobile Iron, who I was with, Pulse Secure, and we just announced that we're going to be acquiring ShareWell software as well. So plenty of expansion occurring over here. Now, Phil, you're based in Salt Lake City, Utah. I am up here in the San Francisco Bay Area, just outside of San Jose. One last personal question so people can get to know you. Tell us what you do when you're not thinking about cybersecurity, if that ever happens, that may never happen, (laughs) but as you away from the office. Tell us one fun hobby you do to try to relax. I I have four wonderful kids. And one of the things that I'd really like to do is take them up skiing. Obviously, I live in Salt Lake City. So we have mountains and we, we get a chance to go skiing during the winter. And uh, while I enjoy skiing, I really love it when I can, when I get to take my kids with me. Sometimes these days as they're getting older, it, it's one or two rather than all of them. It's funny. I feel like I, I, I messed up with the first two kids. I, I didn't, I was a little bit less patient as a father and, and, and I think I turned them off to skiing more than anything else. But the younger two, I kind of got it figured out. And so they enjoy it very much. And so we get to go up every once in a while and, and that's just a lot of fun. All right. Nice thing about having four kids. If you don't get it right the first time or the second time, you keep correcting (laughs) midstream. All right. I have been skiing one time being a California native. That was something I just never really got into making the the weekend trip up to Tahoe. And I'll tell you in the last few years, those trips have gotten longer and longer as the traffic lines have grown and grown. All right, why don't we shift gears here, Phil? Let's talk security now. So today, our focus is ransomware. Now, this month's edition of CISO Mag has the cover story titled, Ransomware, a Pandemic Plaguing the Digital World. Now, for those not familiar with CISO Mag out there, it is positioned as the handbook for chief information security officers, CXOs, and every stakeholder wanting to keep the internet safe. Phil, let, let me ask you, ransomware, a pandemic plaguing the digital world. Sounds ominous, sounds all threatening. How ominous is it and how fearful should we be? That's a really good question. And a a couple of things, first of all, on the negative side, on the ominous and fearful side, it absolutely is a very strong pandemic right now, epidemic. Ransomware over the last couple of years has has grown very appreciably. Ransomware, the, the average ransom now, it, it is not the $500 Bitcoin that it used to be. It's in the neighborhood of $200,000. And it usually shuts down an organization an average of 15 days. Think about your organization. Think about what it would mean to your company to be completely inoperable for 15 days. For a lot of companies, that's huge amounts of revenue. And if you can shave a few days off of that by paying a quarter million dollars, it turns out that a lot of companies are willing to do that. And because of that, because of the, that insidious nature of ransomware to absolutely shut down your organization, there are more players in the ransomware space. They're plaguing more organizations. And as, as security professionals, we need to be so much more vigilant and so much more focused on what we need to do in order to protect our organization to avoid the ransomware incidents. And then also we need to be focused on what we need to do to recover when ransomware hits our environments so that we don't have to pay a quarter million dollars and we don't have to be have our doors shut for an average of 15 days. 
it's it's significant. I'm not going to say that it's not. the. Uh, but the other side is there are things that we can do as an organization in order to protect our company and protect what we need to do so that we can recover, so that we can avoid those kind of ransomware attacks. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of those today, I think. All right. And, and just to get back to ransomware, it really is this article in the CISO mag, it predicts. So this is currently, ransomware is costing corporations globally billions of dollars. They're predicting that in 2021, this could rise to as much as 20 billion dollars. So this is big business for cyber criminals now, as you said, and it is growing seemingly by the day. So why don't we dive in a little bit and say, you know, what is it where companies, what precautions can companies take so they don't find themselves held hostage by cyber criminals? Well, th- there's a number of things that they can do. We tended to split it up into a couple of different into a couple of different groups. The first group is what can we do as an organization to prevent ransomware? And there's a few things that that, that come up over and over again in terms of preventing ransomware that, uh, that that are really important. The first is that your main line of defense happens to be your employees. Social engineering, email phishing, and malicious email links is one area, one of the one of the major areas, one of the major vectors that the criminal organizations use in order to get into your environment. Another one has to do with unpatched software. When you are when you have a presence on the internet, like just about every company does these days, having software that is old or unpatched leaves you vulnerable to people exploiting that software and getting into your systems. So r- making sure that your that your solutions are patched, all of them, but of course making sure especially that the internet facing components are, are, are patched and up to date is critical. So those are the, really the two of the, the the major pieces that we talk about in terms of in, in terms of trying to protect. There's a number of prevention activities as well that that we talk about specifically making sure that you have backups. The problem with having backups is people believe if they have a backup that they're okay. But you got to remember the problem isn't necessarily not being able to recover that data. The problem is those 15 days that it takes you to recover that data. So having a backup is great, but you need to be able to practice at how long is it going to take you to recover systems. Now, when ransomware strikes, oftentimes you have to recover hundreds or thousands of workstations and servers all at the same time. So it's not just restoring data. You have to rebuild the environment and then restore the data on top of it. That takes days, not minutes, and, and it requires a lot of resources. Something that you need to know how long it's going to take, you need to rehearse, you need to figure out solutions that can get you through that process faster from a recovery standpoint. So let's talk about some of the other things that you can do from a, and help from a prevention. One of, the, one of the big things that the criminals do is called privilege escalation. Privilege escalation is the concept of I've got low level access to a system and so I want to get some better access. Maybe I've exploited a a spot on on an internet for a company and so I have access to a low level access to one server that's internet facing. But now I want to be able to turn that into something that gets more insidious and and, and climb into into the corporate directory and things like that. One of the things that, that really helps in that space is what we're call, what we call credential management, which we know commonly as, as usually as passwords, password strength, password, the capabilities around multi-factor authentication, and and some of those kind of areas really are important. And there's a lot of change going on right now in that whole credential management space. So anyway. It's a rambly answer, but there's a lot going on in this space. All right, let me ask you this. Let's personalize this a little bit more. So I'm an average user on the Avanti network now. So let me ask you this. What keeps you up at night as chief security officer in thinking about the education and awareness of all of your users within the company? What is it with a- where you might say, God, I hope Adrian doesn't do X, or I hope Adrian can educate himself in this way. How do you address from in in your position, how do you address all of the users within the network and what they can do to help prevent this? Well, that's a great question. And you're right. Oftentimes, 
our, our user communities are one of the are one of the weakest links. And so one of the things that does keep me awake is how do I help our users make sure they can get their job done, but at the same time, they don't expose our network to unnecessary risk. One of the things that we do at Avanti that I think is a real important thing is has is around this whole education idea, especially with respect to email. Of course, we have email solutions such as, uh, you know, email solutions such as an email gateway that help our users by making sure that that spam and, and obviously malicious emails don't get through. But we also educate our users both by by providing them training and also by my team actually sends out phishing uh, campaigns to our to our users. So we will intentionally send phishing emails to our user community as often as six times a year, and we try to def- make sure that they are thinking about not clicking on emails. It's so important. That is one of that is one of the weakest links. And so that's an area where we do actually do spend quite a bit of time. Adrian, one of the things that you'll notice, and welcome to Avanti, by the way, one of the things that you will notice is that you'll get you'll you will get some emails that if you click on them, they will come back and say you've been fished. They'll come back with bright red and say you shouldn't have clicked on this and here's what you should have done instead. But those kind of things. It gives us an opportunity to train those users during the day, during when they're most likely to be when their guard is down and that, and, that, and that sort of thing. And if those users, my thought is, if those users are looking out for emails that my team might send them, that's just the same behavior as looking out for emails that the criminals are going to be sending them. So it's the right kind of behavior. So we're trying to make sure that the users have some of that education and some of that training. And then how do you follow up on that? Depending on what percentage of users come back who actually wind up clicking on it, you know, versus not, how do you then follow up in that regard? And in, in, let's say in the last phishing test that you sent out, how did we do as a company? We, we typically do a little bit better than the industry average. And we do rate that based on industry average. And what we do is we follow up with users a couple of different ways. First of all, there's follow up immediately. So as soon as a user clicks on, on that email, they're, they're taken to some training. So they can actually read, find out what they did and everything like that. Now, users tend to get panicked when they see something like that. They feel like, oh, I did something wrong. My job's in jeopardy and things like that. So they tend to close some of those opportunities. They they might not read everything that I say because they want to just close it as quick as they can, thinking that if they close it fast, we won't know that they clicked on it in the first place, which obviously isn't true. So we do tend to follow up with with users afterwards. There are, we follow up more with, with repeat offenders. It turns out that there are some users, some of us, are just natural born clickers. We we just like to, we, we see something show up in our email and we can't help ourselves, we click on it. And so we follow up with, with those folks, make sure that they feel safe, but at the same time, educate them. That that education is so important. So we, we do spend a lot of time identifying who they are and, and following up. And that internal testing by, by sending out these messages for people who are unaware and seeing how the Avanti employee base in this example, how they respond to that is a key part in those education efforts. Absolutely. Uh, it absolutely is. We really focus on helping our user community become aware of their own their own sensibilities, their own prejudices, their own habits that, that need to change. You, you can't change a habit unless you become aware that it's a habit. And unless somebody tells you that that's a habit that's going to cause problems, they, they might not be aware of that. So we try hard to, to make that awareness and and that changing habits really a, a, a keystone of, of that education. All right. Well, I'm going to be on the lookout for those emails and I'm going to make sure that I do not click. And coming from Mobile Iron, obviously we had plenty of experience in the security realm with phishing, with smishing, right? The SMS version of phishing. Yeah. We we were familiar with that over in the mobile iron space. All right. We're just about reaching our time limit here, Phil. So as we look to 2021, where there is a forecast that ransomware could go up to costing corporations as much as $20 billion in 2021, your final thoughts about ransomware preparedness for this year? Well, a few different things that are really important and, and, and probably the most important thing is to, but, but besides the, some of the user education that we spent quite a bit of time talking about, has to do with incident management. Your organization needs to be focused on what do we do if and when this kind of thing happens. One of the ransomware can attack and destroy an organization or can lock up an organization very quickly. 
So being able to respond quickly when systems are, are known to be infected, taking them offline immediately, having a process by which you go through to do that, making sure that your employees don't second guess those messages is real important. And so you have to prepare for that. You have to have an incident management crew that's responsible for that, making sure that they can quickly make decisions and that the organization will fall in line quickly. That's one of the more important things that you need to be able to do. All right, Phil. So folks, that's Phil Richards, our chief security officer here at Avanti. Phil, thanks so much for joining us today and look forward to doing this again and also bringing Chris Gettle, your partner in crime, our senior director of product management who was not able to join us today. We'll bring him in here two weeks from now on the next Avanti Insights. Thanks, Adrian. It's a lot of fun. All right, folks, for Phil Richards, I'm Adrian Vernon. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be coming to you every two weeks with hot topics for IT professionals. Until next time, stay safe, be secure, and keep smiling.